Well, hey everyone, it's Nancy, the nurse practitioner, and haven't talked to you in a little while, but I'm back and I'm here with a, a wonderful person. His name is Christopher McLellan. He is an author of What's the Deal with Caregiving? And he's featured in a really cool uh, Pulitzer Prize nominated caregiving story, which was very touching to me. It was featured in 2015 called In Sickness and in Health, A Couple's Final Journey. I had to watch that twice, Chris, that was so good. Um, he's affectionately known as the nationwide, the bow tie guy, which I love. <laughs> it's great to have a uh, tag name. We'll never forget you, Chris, ever. <laughs> we may also call you Santa on the side though. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's an honor as well. <laughs> so he's involved with a vast network of uh, family caregivers. He um, has a caregiving blog entitled The Purple Jacket. And after his partner's diagnosis of esophageal cancer, he continues to be an ardent advocate for caregivers through this blog and a podcast entitled Healing Ties. Beautiful. So Chris has been around a while. He has a master's degree um, and uh, he did a thesis on spiral of silence. Is that right, Chris? Spiral of silence, caregiving Care stress and the in its impact in the workplace. That's a really cool title. So that must have a lot of good information. And he was accepted into the faculty of Gonzaga. Where's Gonzaga University? Spokane, Washington. Oh, wow. Okay. It's beautiful out there. It, I got to get my tugboat over there. I want to see what that looks like up there. I, I, I'm ready. We can do some shows there. Yeah, we'll do it right on the water. <laughs> so um, he presents frequently on topics that impact family caregivers. So we're going to get right to the chase. We're meeting today. First, I want to see your book, Chris. Can you just hold oh, it up and show everyone yes. mm -hmm. this beautiful there is, book? Let's see if... Uh, there you go. What's the deal with caregiving? What's the deal with caregiving? And, and that is Chris. Mm -hmm. And that is a picture of uh, me with hair. Uh, partner Richard, who uh, uh, made his life transition in March of 2014. And we were able to um, receive permission from the South Florida Sun Sentinel for using our that picture uh, that was in our story that's still available online for all your listeners and readers and viewers to, to check out. So all of you who know me, I have a Facebook page and we are going to give you all the information to risk, reach Chris, his book. And if you want to get a, be part of the blog or see the blog. So we'll do all that in the end, Chris, if that's okay with you. That's fine. First, tell us your feelings about story sharing. Well, I, I, you know, we were fortunate to have our story told uh, by the South Florida Sun Sentinel. And I firmly believe it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. And our common cause is supporting caregivers before, during, and like me, after caregiving ends. And I, I've come to learn uh, that the best information and referral usually comes from one caregiver to another. And when, because a caregiver is going to, they're not going to they're not gonna share something that didn't work for them. They're gonna share something that worked for them. Uh, and that's why uh, as now I'm seven years past caregiving, I could just consider myself a caregiver advocate. Mm. And we're just trying to give as, as much uh, uh, information and referral through story sharing as we can because story sharing is cathartic. It not only does it help the person who's receiving it Mm -hmm. It really helps the person who, it also helps the person who's giving it because it, it kind of reaffirms uh, why and how uh, you do that. Because caregivers need three things, validation, resources, and respite. And I believe it all comes through sharing our stories. Good idea. And, and not to toot my horn, but I do have a tool book and it sort of is on that premise too. Like um, I learned as a caregiver, as a clinician, all the things that people didn't know and how can you find the ways of learning them through somebody else who did them and met millions right. of, not millions, but thousands of people in the same boat and who figured it out and was more resilient and innovative than the other. And those are the ideas I grabbed from my book. I'm like, I well, need I'm, a picture of that. And I, and I know I have one coming, so I can't wait to get into it, so. <laughs> yeah, I just got it in the mail to you. Um, it, it, it's three pounds, four pounds. So don't drop it on your foot. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So we're going to go on to some other really interesting things. And this really sparked me about Chris is that I watched his Pulitzer Prize um, nominated story. Um, how long was that? Because it was really well done and enticing to watch twice. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the, the, the kind of the genesis of the story was that um, uh, the reporters who were looking to do a story on same-sex caregivers. Mm -hmm. And it evolved into something uh, larger than anybody had really ever anticipated because as we first started, uh, uh, Richard's cancer returned. And it had been dormant for over, uh, well, well over a year and a half. Uh, uh, but it came back with an with a vengeance in September of 2013, and and by then we had, you know, the, the reporters were following us, and and it was uh, it was a wonderful experience. People kept saying, "How could you let two people so intimately involved in your life?" And it's like, well, uh, you, you saw them, but you didn't see them. They were there, but they weren't there. But as they recognized that the story was evolving more yeah. with some of the challenges that we were receiving as uh, same-sex couples, uh, it, and then as his health continued to deteriorate, they realized that they had more. And this turned out to be something more than what any of us could have ever expected. And I think the, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of telling story here, Nancy, is that you know, caregiving is indiscriminate. There's no gender boundaries. There's no educational boundaries. There's no economic boundaries. There's no orientation boundaries. Caregiving impacts everybody. Mm -hmm. And the reason our story was so successful, uh, seen by now over 500,000 people worldwide, I still get comments about it today. The story superseded anything about same-sex couples that anybody anybody who read the story could put themselves in our position because it was all about love, care, and commitment. Well, what I felt when I watched that was the, 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 the compassion and love that I felt from you towards your partner and the way you gave of yourself through that video really touched me. And it made me realize that love is what is caregiving. You know, if you, and compassion right. is about not how you feel giving love is what you give that for the other person. Uh, I just felt so, mm -hmm. it was just so sweet. And um, you're right, yeah. it's loving anyone that you love, that you will take care of to the bitter, to bitter end, no matter right. what, like right. you said, for sickness and health. For um, sickness and health. Sickness you and know, and and health. I, it was just yeah. a beautiful story. So we're gonna show you everybody where to look at that video at the end. I guess because I went on Chris's website, I was able to find the video there. Is that correct? Is that where I got it? Yeah, the the the, the video, <clears throat> pardon me, is available and as is the written story. So they're they're two separate uh, yeah. links. The the video unfortunately is no longer attached to the story, but there you could read the read the story and see the video on two separate links, and we'll have that for you at the end of the show. That'd be great. Okay, so moving on. Now, it's interesting you talk about a global network of care. And uh, right. as people know, I'm, I've now become the community for the world as a nurse practitioner, giving <clears throat> videos and getting responses from everywhere. Um, when I met Chris, <clears throat> he, meant, he talked about his global network and that gave me chills because, you know, the caregivers are everywhere. We are all right. over the world. We are all different right. makes and models, all different ages all right. different circumstances and we're all in the same boat sort of together um, and to have all the tools you can is great. So tell us what your lofty goal My is, lofty is goal. about global right. network of care. Well, thank you, Nancy. And you know, as you mentioned earlier, I originally started blogging on my blog called the purple jacket. And from there I created the, my healing ties podcast, healing ties from the bow tie guy. And and trying to find where I fit in this vast network of family caregivers. Uh, you know, my educational backgrounds in social work, uh, leadership and communication. I did six years in the seminary. Oh my God, that's a whole other, that's for a whole other story we can talk about. But um, it, it, it always came back to me about information and referral and where do I fit? And so I created uh, what we call the whole care network, which is a 
uh, a podcasting network where caregivers share their stories, uh, share their resources, and uh, podcasting is global. The internet is global. Mm -hmm. Caregiving is global. Absolutely. And we want to create a global network of care so that people can share stories and resources mm -hmm. with like-minded people, trusted resources. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they learned we're as the, the, we're not the expert on everything. We're not the expert on everything. And, mm -hmm. and I learned through the process of the, uh, if I really want to make this a global network of care, I have to have more people uh, working on this and helping me out. So we've got a new website. We're excited about where it's going because it's a perfect example. I got to meet an awesome person like you because of the site. And ditto. Um, so do you want to talk about the radio show? Sure. The, you know, my podcast, Healing Ties from uh, the Bowtie Guy, we just went on a, a station in the UK, ukhealthradio.com, with over 1.2 million uh, subscribers. Cool. So we're really excited about that. And then later on this year, in 2021, we'll be uh, incorporating a streaming radio channel into the whole care network. So there'll be podcasts, they'll still be there. But our streaming radio channel, I think is going to be a little bit unique. And if I can pull off this dream. You think about when are caregivers looking for the most information? Yeah. At night. Mm -hmm. When are when are you stressed out? At night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our programming is going to be from 8, 8, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. with oh, uh, cool. live shows, recorded shows, uh, meditation, uh, self-help. We'll even have some call-in shows. So, you know, you can... As you're sitting there wondering about what's going on with your care partner, you can receive some uh, inspirational thoughts and talk to people uh, that understand the journey that you're on because we've been on it Is it going to be a ourselves. question and answer? Is there going to be any? Is there going to be any interaction, or is it just supposed to be mostly stories and, and blogging? There will be the, some shows will have interaction. We'll be able to take uh, listeners' uh, uh, calls that I didn't have before, like web design. Yeah, well, you know, I'm doing a caregiver support group right now, and uh, every two weeks I have to come up with a new topic, and uh, I'm finding I'm getting into things like how to do your own mini mental exam, and right. maybe one for your parent and scoring it and watching, right. and every six months you can do it with yourself, and then I did one on depression and where to get help, and then I did one on, I'm doing one on self-sabotage, how to not had all, all the things, the bad habits you've always had that do not uh, work out and you never learn. Well, now you're a caregiver and now you have to figure out a different way because this habit was not working in your life. So right. how do you unself sabotage yourself? So some of it is like, so cool. I, I need to, I, I need to see that one and hear and listen to well, it. And we'll talk about that later, but it's all from our lovely friend, Lauren, uh, Gelberg Goff. Oh yeah, that's right, one Lauren. Chapter on desired, out, de desired outcomes. Desired outcomes. Oh my gosh, that, everything that is... we all do, everyone, is what we desire, mm -hmm. uh, but we would love to see a good outcome. And there is a way to get to your desired outcome. And it's, yeah. Well, moving forward, um, so the whole care network, we're kind of getting that you're seeing what I'm seeing, that the world is just one community. Uh, what do you exactly. want to say about that? Well, you know, I, I look at, uh, let, let's just kind of step back for a second. When, am I, when Richard was diagnosed in 2011, where did I go for information? I went to Dr. Google. I tried to, I searched, I searched. And what did I find? Yeah. I found that there's caregivers all over the world mm -hmm. that were dealing with the same issues. And, yeah. and, and as I look at this, uh, opportunity to uh, uh, bring people together from all parts of the world to talk about something that is meaningful in life. Caregiving is, caregiving is hard, there's no doubt about it, but there's nothing more meaningful than being entrusted in the care of another person, especially at the time when life transitions. Mm -hmm. And people who understand that the most are those who that have been through it now and can i answer mention something that you just struck me with is my mother-in-law i went down to florida and got her during covid yeah spent eight days there and 
she texted me and, and she has since passed. She died six weeks after we got her here with all her stuff from Florida. It was like her, her push to get up here to see her children for one last time, get out of this house in Florida that we cleaned out. Well, she got to see all her children. And what I was oh. just going to say is that she texted me and I still have the text and it said, Nancy, thank you for being such a good friend to me. And I was like, but I'm your, thinking to myself, I'm your daughter-in-law. And my friend said, but Nancy, a friend is so much better than a daughter-in-law. That's just a title. Yeah. A friend meant that you were there for her in the thick of things and she entrusted you. And right. I, that made me very- Touch my heart. incredible. To yeah, that's that. incredible. I can, I understand why you would keep that text. Uh, I also found a, a recording of her calling the day before I came. I was going through my phone erasing things and there's a recording of her speaking saying, Nancy, are you coming tomorrow? You're really getting on a plane from Connecticut and coming? And you could hear the desperation in her voice and she's not that kind of person. She took care of seven children. She right. was a devout Christian. She had no, she was very, so what I'm trying to say is that I answered the calling of her desperation after she's taking care of so many people and to her at the end, I was her friend. And that meant like the world to me. So. Well, you know, what's a, important about that story, Nancy, is you have a keepsake. Hmm. And and I, I think uh, when we're in the midst of caregiving and there's so many things going to the left, going to the right, they're hitting you at times. You just don't know when it's, you don't know when it's going to start. You don't know when it's going to end. Those are the common traits, but it's those keepsakes when yeah. you're in the middle of it, mm -hmm. that I encourage every caregiver to, to have a keepsake about, about your, and I'll use the generic term care partner, mm -hmm. because I, I can guarantee everybody, all your, your viewers and listeners, when it ends, the good days are, are going to outweigh the bad days. It's just that those bad days while you're in the middle of it were so intense. Yeah. And when you have those keepsakes like you do, yeah. it reminds you of those good days. And, and, you know, like with Richard, I never saw the video until the story was published. I didn't know anything about what he had said mm -hmm. to, to me. He was saying it to me in yeah. that video, I have the greatest gift from that story. And that's why another, you know, another example of keepsake stories, it's why these are so important, because it reminds us of the good days. I have another quick idea for you that okay. it, and I, <clears throat> I wanted to do a Shutterfly book, all <gasps> of a sudden up on my Facebook page, it said, the, the, why don't you do a photo book on the best that best of 2020? And I'm thinking the best. I'm like, I decided to say 2020, how I saw it. <laughs> and in 2020, everything went loose for everyone, but I also had this trip my, from my mother-in-law. And I have pictures of me with a water bottle with wine in it, sitting at the, the pool by myself, just trying to veg down because she had a list a hundred miles long of things she'll do till midnight. And I'm like, ah, we did the list today. I'm going to the pool. Are you coming or not? But I have so many pictures of her. I have a picture of her burying uh, St. Anthony in the backyard upside down to sell her house. Yeah. Yes. Here she is on her hands and knees. I have her underneath her desk pulling wires out from her internet to try to get ready to move. I have so many cool pictures. We had nothing but cards to play at night. No internet, no seats. We had right. two. All those pictures I took are going to go in this little photo book. That's that going to be wonderful. Children. And say, you missed this. I was right. your substitute. <laughs> but here's a book for you. Maybe I'll do it for Christmas, like the keepsake book or something. And they'll laugh oh. and they'll cry, but it, it was what happened and they weren't it, there. It, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm just a real big proponent of you doing that because it's so meaningful and such a special, special way to remember. It is. And you know, you do forget a little if you don't have it and pull it out and say, wow, you've dusted off. And like, Oh, right. I remember this book and what you did and what, oh, I remember that day. And oh, wasn't that great? It wasn't that sad. It wasn't that, you know. So yes, we have to do things that make us feel like we didn't do everything in vain, first of all. Right. Mm -hmm. And that we also helped them and they felt like that we were there for a reason. 
to get mm-hmm. them through the last transition of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's your takeaway for our meeting today? Since we're, we could talk all day, Chris, I could see that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I, I'm ready. I could talk all day to you too. <laughs> and by I, I the way, before the, you do that, what's yeah. on your forehead? Oh, my forehead. You see that right there? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I I had a little uh, Mohs uh, surgery okay. on Saturday, and and feeling really good today. Feeling started to feel good yesterday. I was not going to ever cancel on you, but I think the, you know, the kind of the moral of the story here for caregivers is your cape is limited. Have a backup plan. Um, yeah. Because you can end up being sick or something. You you know. You, yeah. And, and, you know, I might as well say another thing. I did two videos on skin cancer, everybody, and, and you're, you're showing me where the sun shines. And maybe right. I better send you a Nancy the MP baseball cap that you can wear I, on your I, lovely head. I, I, will, I will sport that with a, one of my favorite bow ties. Right I will, I, that could be great. It has to be a black a sport uh, tie. <clears throat> so <laughs> well, anyway. The, the kind of the takeaway is um, a, a couple of things. Uh, sharing information, uh, sharing stories, and most importantly, collaborating, because caregiving is a universal issue. And the more people that we can reach through our networks, Mm -hmm. and working together and collaborating together, it breaks down these unnecessary silos, Mm -hmm. uh, so that people can get the information. And, um, service that they need. Well, this has been wonderful. And Chris McLellan, thank you for joining us, the Bowtie Guy. I'm Nancy, the nurse practitioner from Caregiver Success. Please check out my YouTube channel on Caregiver Success. And I will be putting on facebook.com forward slash caregiver success. Any information that Chris forwards to me to find his blog, to find his uh, podcast, his book, and uh, anything else he wants to give us so that you can connect with Chris McLellan. So Chris, it was wonderful to meet you today on our video and um, see everybody at the next one. Okay. Take care all. Thanks. Bye, Chris.